My interest is really in rhabdomyosarcoma, which is a special subtype of um, sarcomas, which are, in, in general, they're, uh, they're cancers of connective tissue. So rhabdomyosarcoma is the most common soft tissue sarcoma that we see in children and young adults. Um, and, you know, we've, we've made some really phenomenal advances for patients with what we now call low-risk and intermediate-risk disease. But unfortunately, patients with high-risk disease, which is either spread by the time we detect it, or has certain molecular features that makes it very high risk. Um, unfortunately, our patients really do no better today than they did do 20, 30 years ago. I am sort of approaching this problem from a, a sort of left field approach. Uh, so a lot of chemotherapies that we use right now work on damaging DNA and, and having cells respond to that. And I'm instead looking at what happens when we sort of overload the protein quality control mechanisms that cells have. So it turns out that too much proteins causes you know, misfolding, toxic aggregation, and cancer cells have ways to try and overcome that. Uh, but by working with some collaborators, we have some new compounds that we think can actually block those mechanisms and really just kind of hit the cancer cells where they're most susceptible. You know, this award really came at a critical point for me. So I'm now finishing the last of my um, sort of guaranteed years as a clinical trainee in oncology. And that's a time when I think I see a lot of people who are in this field, you know, starting to wonder, well, what's next? What am I going to do? Um, I've been very selfish. I've been able to sort of do both of the things that I love. I get to go and see my patients and I get to think hard about their problems from a scientist's perspective. Um, and I think without the funding to really support that combined clinical research program going forward, I would be forced to choose one or the other. Um, and that might mean going to work at a biotech company and work on you know, drug discovery or something, but not really have the choice of what I wanted to work on, not be able to really rely on that close connection that I have with my patients or to go and be a clinical oncologist, which of course would be incredibly rewarding and we need all the, you know, all the help that we can get, but not really feel like I'd be able to push the field forward in the way that I can do with my lab research now. So, so really this award enables me to not have to choose. It lets me to continue being you know, a compassionate doctor and it lets me continue to be a scientist who really loves thinking about these problems and pushing the field forward. And without that funding, I, I just don't think I can do both. But to be able to work uh, in this area, thanks to some people who have the foresight to recognize that, you know, it may be a small number, but, but that's really a, a major burden on the health of this country is really, it's a privilege. So thank you to the Sun Foundation, absolutely.